correspondent Andy Moore is with me. Andy, what's the latest you're hearing? Uh, well, let's start with what we know officially from the police, and that is a very brief message uh, from the police. Um, it's on their Twitter feed. It's actually in English. Uh, they say that several persons have been stabbed. Uh, one person has been shot and arrested. We understand that person uh, was shot in the leg. So those are the very brief details uh, we have officially. Now, there are reports, and I emphasise these are just reports at the moment, that one person uh, may have been killed. That may be a woman. It is also reported that her baby may have been involved in the attack uh, somehow or other. There are reports also that it's more than one suspect is involved in this, that uh, those other suspects may still be on the run. This happened in the centre of Turku. From the images, from the pictures I've seen, it appears to be a, an open plaza or square in, in the centre of Turku. Uh, now, on top of that, I've seen a, a video which is said to have been taken at the scene of the attack. It's unverified, so we don't know for sure. But on that video, you can hear uh, somebody apparently shouting, Allah U Akbar, which we know means God is great. So uh, that is unverified at the moment, but those are the sorts of details we're getting. And we're also seeing uh, that Finnish police say security is being stepped up at, at transport hubs as well in the country. That's right, yes. Uh, across the country, in the capital, uh, Helsinki, and at other locations uh, around uh, the country. And police also say, I should add, that they sent out a message telling people to avoid uh, the centre of Turku, which is the sort of message we're becoming familiar with in an attack like this, one of the first things they do is to warn people to, to stay away from the area. And on Twitter, you can sense a real uh, feeling of shock from people, you know, saying, sleepy, charming Turku, how could something like this happen there? That's right. We don't know if this is a terror attack, but it certainly has the hallmarks of it. And as far as I'm aware, uh, Finland hasn't been subject to these sort of attacks recently. Andy, I'm just going to interrupt you because we have first pictures coming into us from Finnish television off the scene or close to the scene of the attack. You can obviously see emergency vehicles there, but uh, traffic also moving around nearby. And this has been described as the Pretori market square area of Turku, Andy, so it seems to be right in the centre of the city. That's right, yes, a, a very large open area. It may be that the transport hubs, it may be that the railway station is very close to there. There was a big municipal building that I couldn't quite recognise, but it, it seems to be right in the, the centre of the city. Uh, just another update from the police in Finland I'm just uh, seeing here. Uh, again, in, in English, the, We've seen it actually in, in Spain that police, when they want to get a message out, they do it in several languages. And they're doing that in Finland at the moment. And it says from the Finnish police, uh, anyone who has information about what happened, uh, please call these uh, numbers. So the police are appealing for information about what has happened or is happening uh, from the general public. OK, Andy, thank you for that update. We're going to keep a very close eye on what's happening there. But right now, uh, let's return to Ben Brown in Barcelona. Ben. Yeah, Anita, thank you very much indeed. Well, the police investigation um, is very much continuing this afternoon and also particularly the manhunt for Musa Ukabia, the 18-year-old who is thought to be the young man who drove the van, the white Fiat van down Las Ramblas yesterday, just before five o'clock local time, ploughing into pedestrians, uh, killing 13. We gather now one of the dead is an American uh, citizen. We know that he rented the vehicle. It seems that he may have stolen his brother's identity papers and used them to rent the vehicle. So we're just going to discuss the whole issue of renting vehicles and using them in these uh, terror attacks because it is becoming a pattern. We've seen it in, in France, in Germany, in Britain, of course, now here in Barcelona. Uh, we can talk to Toby Poston, who is from the British Vehicle uh, Rental and Leasing Association. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, I think there have been suggestions that it is simply too easy for people to rent a vehicle, uh, especially a van. Is, is there any way of tightening up on the procedures, would you say? I think we have to remember that, that, um, that the rental desk is not really the front line of dealing with these sorts of issues. At the moment, anyone working a rental desk, their main priority is customer service. They are not trained in, in profiling or, or trying to tackle terrorists. 
Um, we have to remember that when these, when these terrorists walk into these branches, they're not wearing bomb, vest, bomb vests, um, they're not sort of dressed for combat. Um, and they, they usually carry typically normal ID, normal credit cards. Um, you know, they're, they're fanatics, they're not idiots. What, what sort of ID is required typically if you are renting a, a vehicle, say a van of some description? So our members typically have, have the, the rental industry typically has three main responsibilities when they're, they're looking to rent out a vehicle. The first one is checking that that customer um, is who they say they are, so they're looking for some form of ID. If they're looking to rent a truck, and quite often if they're looking to rent a van, they will try and set up some form of account, some form of business account to, to again verify who they are. Secondly, they're looking to confirm that person can pay for the, the vehicle they're renting. So again, they'll be looking for some form of um, credit card or do some form of credit check. And the third thing they're looking to do is to establish that that person is licensed to drive on the road and is insured. So again, that is another form of, of identity check. What they can't do is obviously check um, what that person's intent is. But it is difficult. I mean, what, what would you say to people, you know, people in these car hire, van hire offices? Do they need to be more vigilant? I mean, it's obviously becoming a, really a, we a weapon of choice almost for, for terrorists. We've seen it in Britain. We've seen it in London. Now again, we've seen it here. I mean, it's, it's very difficult, isn't it? Absolutely. And our, our members at the, the rental industry is absolutely determined to do more to deter and detect. We, we're sick and tired of having to respond to these issues. We want to be helping to prevent them. And there's, there's two main ways that we're doing that. The first is we're, we're working at an unprecedented level with law enforcement agencies. I know for a fact that all our members have posters up in their branches. They have uh, counter-terrorism hotlines all around their branches. They've trained their staff. The second thing we're trying to do is ensure that we've got better data sharing um, with the authorities. We've always done this in the past, but we need to move forward and try and get this happening on an even, even stronger basis so that we've got the ability to hopefully check some form of real-time cross-referencing maybe with, with the systems that our members have got and the counter-terrorism watch list. So if you know, one of your members is working in, 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 a, in a rental office and they see or hear anything suspicious, what, what is the advice? What should they do? It's the same as anyone else, really. The same response that goes out to anyone involved in one of these, one of these um, uh, attacks. You know, you don't, what you don't want to do is confront these people. You want to come up with a way of uh, alerting the authorities in as quickly a way as possible. Um, so that they can then deal with the situation in a rental exit situation that maybe they want to monitor that person in that vehicle or they may w want them not to rent them at all. But that's the advice that they would take once they've reported the issue. And when you say that you've been discussing all these issues with the authorities, with the police, you know, with the counter-terrorism agencies, I mean, what kind of discussions are there? Is, it, is this about perhaps increasing the, the, the sort of ID that is required, maybe different forms of ID?